Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, August 3rd, and then we'll see how things look for Friday, August 4th. We had another down day, but it wasn't all that severe. We were down just about a quarter of a percent with the S&P 500. The other indexes held up fairly well. We were able to see some buying coming in to try to push prices back higher. The market's kind of at a tipping point right now. We are switching more negative. We are negative in the short term, but we're still looking oversold almost immediately. We're switching over to negative in the intermediate term. The long term's still holding up okay, but we're also holding above support. Now, we're going to have the big employment situation report coming out on Friday. Is that going to be a catalyst to send prices back higher? Is that support going to hold? Or is the market going to continue to go down, break through support, and turn even more negative? First of all, I am trying different thumbnails every day this week. I'm going to post those on the YouTube community tab over the weekend. Anybody who's interested, if you want to give a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or make a comment, I'm just trying some different things. Some that seem to go with kind of my personality, others that really don't. I might even try some more going forward from here, but I would appreciate any feedback on that if you want to take the time to do it. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a gap lower open. It looked like, okay, here we go. We're just going to continue on. But as we see a lot with a gap, we didn't see that on Wednesday, but we did on Thursday. We come back and then fill the gap. We actually went positive for a little while. But right at the open, we opened at S1 at 44.96. So we did break below that 4,500 level. And then we chopped above and below S1. As the day went on, prices rose. We got above the unchanged level. Then we fell back below the unchanged level. And we closed above S1 at 45.02. So yes, intraday we lost 4,500. But by the time we closed, we were back above 4,500. We were down 0.25% on below average volume. The fixation right now, the technicals, as I said, negative in the short term, but oversold. Turning more negative in the intermediate term, but still some things in the background that could still give the market support. It's all about interest rates right now. Bond prices keep going down. Interest rates are going up. We're going to have to see what the employment situation report does to that and how that's going to direct the market. What are some comments that we can make? After the market closed, we did get some earnings reports, pretty influential, both from Apple. After their earnings report, they were lower. Amazon came out and they were higher. The Bank of England raised rates a quarter of a percent. They're now at five and a quarter percent. Growth did outperform value. That was one positive thing that we saw on Thursday. On a short-term basis, we still have our weird stochastics chart where part of it is overbought, part of it is oversold. Intermediate term, we still have the PMO studies and then the bullish percent index with the S&P 500. On an oversold basis, we've got kind of a long list. Hasn't really changed, but it's still longer. The Stoke RSI, the Williams percent R, the CCI based on 14 periods, the other part of the stochastics chart, and the force index. The dollar was down and interest rates were up. We still have the yield curves that remain inverted. We're still positive with our sentiment at 74. We came up from 76. The trend is positive, but it's dropping below the moving average. So it's a weakening trend. We're still above 20. In fact, we're still trying to come down from 40. I'm keeping our bias at negative again with another down day and mixed to negative until that support really breaks. I'm more of the mixed camp, but technically we're looking more negative. The economic reports that came out, we had the second quarter productivity, the preliminary report, it came in up 3.7%, more than the 1.7% they had expected. So this means folks are being more productive, and that could be a good thing economically and for a company's bottom line. Last time it was down 1.2%. Unit labor costs were up 1.6%, but less than the 2.7% that they had expected. This can also help companies because they're paying people less and getting them to do more. Last time it came in at 3.3%. Weekly jobless claims were about as expected at 227,000. They expected 225,000. Last time we had 221,000. Continuing claims jumped up a little bit at 1.7 million. Last time it was 1.679 million. The S&P Global U.S. Services PMI, it's above 50. 
The final reading came in at 52.3, down from the 54.4 that we saw last time. Factory orders were up 2.3%, more than the 2% they had expected, and really up from the 0.4% we saw last time. The big one, the ISM non-manufacturing index, above 50 at 52.7, a little bit less than the 53% they had expected. Last time it came in at 53.4. Here's some charts. The first one is the U.S. Services PMI, where we're above 50, but we are declining. Then we look at non-farm productivity and unit labor costs. The productivity is the blue line, which is going up. Costs continue to go up overall, but not as much as they had thought they were going to. The ISM Services Index, the total, after going up a little bit, it did decline, but it's still above 50. The prices are starting to turn and go back up. That could be a little inflationary. Factory orders are right at the zero line where we came right back up on a year-over-year -year basis. Weekly jobless claims continue to fall off even though they ticked up this past week. We really follow the four-week moving average, the blue line, and that continues to decline. We're also seeing a decline overall in continuing claims. Then when we take them all together, and this will be updated with the unemployment report after Friday, the red line are the initial claims where they're going down. The blue line are continuing claims. That's going down. And then we'll see what we get on the read for the unemployment rate. Some IsabelNet.com blog charts. This is put out by Goldman Sachs where they say, We expect that a shrinking contribution from food and shelter inflation will slow headline CPI to 2.9% by the end of 2023. Yeah, great. Just you don't eat, you don't live anywhere. That'll do wonders for taking care of inflation. Looking at the spread here where we have an inverted yield curve with the tips, those are shorter term treasuries that people get into that also can readjust as interest rates are going up or down. That is the black line. We compare that to the forward-looking P.E. ratio for the NASDAQ 100 where it continues to go up. When we look at this chart, we notice that these two tend to go in the same direction and they tend to not get very far apart where there's a really wide spread. So does that mean that the P.E. ratio is going to come down or are interest rates going to also have to fall, which means on this chart they would go up? Looking at the median monthly flow into equity mutual funds and ETFs, August tends to see outflows. So that's one of the seasonal things that we're looking at in the background. And then Carson came out with a chart saying, don't fear the first 1% drop. It may be a little hard to see, but going forward, one month, three months, six months, and 12 months, we are positive and have not only a winning percentage, but positive returns looking forward. Professional managers, they're people, they're emotional. They have to act just like regular people do. When they start to get extreme positive or negative, that's when we use this as a contrary indicator. We're coming up here where we had a really high reading a few days ago, and that is suggesting that maybe we should look at things going the other way. We're still seeing a lot of money going into investment grade bonds and high yield bonds, as well as municipals. And there's also money going into Japan. That's according to Bank of America. We're seeing money coming out of financials, the utilities growth, tips, which had been seeing a lot of outflows lately. They're still seeing outflows, but they were leading the pack at the bottom. Central banks barely reduced QE stock from $33 trillion to $31 trillion. Well, still, that's $2 trillion. That's an awful lot of money. But what they're saying is the quantitative easing, did that really help things overall? Their exposure to equities were still above the zero line, and folks are starting to get more into stocks. The latest reading from GDP Now, and I'll go over this in the weekly video, where we're looking at about one and three quarter percent to the upside and about down half a percent to the downside, where the GDP Now estimate is up just under four percent. The debt allocation, now it's at 21 percent, where it is starting to decline. These are folks that are in bonds. And then getting into our charts and analysis, where we did gap lower down at S1, and we just chopped right around S1 for a lot of the open. Then we started to go up higher, but we really couldn't hang on to that. We dropped back below the unchanged level and then came down, but we still closed above S1. So even though it was a down day, we did see some positive things happening within the session. Looking at the 10-minute intraday chart for the SPY, we were seeing some recovery in the initial overnight session, but then when we got into the pre-market session, that's when things went more negative. That ended up seeing the stock market open up lower, but then we saw the recovery throughout the day. We're seeing a little bit of improvement in the initial overnight session, but we're still below the unchanged level. 
Growth did outperform value, and that's another positive sign. It was positive being above the unchanged level where value actually closed down on the day. So on a closing basis, everything was down, but growth was down less than value for the large caps, the mid caps, and the small caps. So when we look at our ratio, we're above the unchanged level and showing some improvement here. That's another potentially positive thing that could be developing in the market. Sentiment, we're seeing a little bit of a tick up with our ulcer index, but it's still showing there's not a lot of fear. We decreased with the line chart and the bar chart for the VIX and volatility settled back down just a little bit with the VIX of the VIX. The equity put call ratio based on five periods, we are continuing to go up. That's more negative for stocks. Here's a longer term look where we're above the 0.55 level and now we're starting to go up. These tend to go in opposite direction of stock prices. The longer term look though is still looking positive. We're declining with the 253 period simple moving average. Looking at the move index where it picked up as bonds are going down, volatility is starting to pick up. After spiking up with the VIX, it ticked down just slightly. We're seeing the relationship coming back more in line where they're having a tendency to go in the same direction. This fear gauge continues to go up where the other fear gauge continues to decline. The ratio between risk on and risk off, it is starting to fall a little bit, but we're going up overall. The advanced decline line studies, we're seeing a little bit of a decline based on price. We were pretty much flat based on volume, but these are still hanging in there for right now. The new highs, new lows, we're seeing a drop off in the new highs, not much of an expansion in the new lows, but our five period is rolling over and our 10 period continues to decline. The advanced decline ratio did decline, but is still barely above zero with the blue line. Accumulation distribution, another thing to be aware of. We're below the moving average, and that's what the smart money is doing. The cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE also showed some more weakness. We're still hanging in there with our regular advanced decline line for the NYSE, even though it did decline. The common stock advanced decline line declined based on price and volume. Again, longer term, we're seeing a negative divergence where we were breaking out based on price. That was not confirmed based on volume. Our other advanced decline line, even though it declined, we're still above this advancing trend line. The advanced decline line studies, we're seeing a little more of a tick down, but all of the indexes continue to be above the moving averages. Looking at our trend, where we're dropping well below the moving average now, that suggests a weakening trend. The green line's on top, but it is declining another day or two of what we've been seeing, and they're gonna cross over negative. Shorter term, seeing largely that same thing under the moving average. Green line is almost touching the red line now, getting ready to cross over negative. Volume continues to be a little bit below average. Our short term charts, where we're still coming below this pivot point, we lost that in Wednesday's session and we're still below that right now. On the bottom, we see where volume trailed to below average. Looking at the 20 period double and triple exponential moving averages, this is our shorter term measurement now. These are starting to roll over, so that's more negative for the short term. When we look at the 20 period simple and exponential moving averages, we're now dropping below. We haven't done that going back to early spring, so this is also suggesting that in the short term we're more negative. The moving average study, we're dropping with the 20, 50, and 200 period moving averages. The Stoke RSI is still extreme negative. The Williams percent R is also extreme negative. The CCI 14 continues to be extreme negative. The Stochastics were extreme negative in the short term, declining in the intermediate term, rolling over and going down in the long term, but still extreme positive. The Force Index continues to be down at the lower Keltner band, so that is suggesting that we've gone down pretty far pretty fast. Some intermediate term charts, still looking at seasonality where we tend to see worse performance in the month of August. We see even worse performance in the month of September, going from 2019 to the present. The balance of power, we're right on the dashed line and we ticked up just a little bit. The 50 period double and triple exponential moving averages, this support did not hold, so this is turning things more negative in the intermediate term. The go no go system still remains more neutral with the lighter colored blue bars. The highest high and lowest low values, we've dropped below the midpoint and now we're starting to come down to the lowest low value. That's more negative as well. The TTM squeeze is also still positive but it is declining and we have the darker colored blue bars. Standard deviations, we're dropping below the midpoint and we're in the minus one standard deviation. 
the ease of movement. Haven't shown this in a little while. We have the equi volume on top, and the thicker these bars are, the more volume went into a particular up or down move. We're seeing the ease of movement based on 14 periods starting to drop below zero. The Arun indicator turning down just barely as we see a decrease in buyers and flattening out with sellers. The S&P 500 McClellan oscillator is below zero and declining. That's negative. So when we look at the summation index based on price, we're negatives because we're going down. We turn negative based on volume a few days before that. So that is a leading indicator of what is happening. The NYSE McClellan oscillator is also continuing to drop below zero. So the summation index for the NYSE based on price is turning down as well as volume. The Swellen Trading Oscillator, based on price and volume, we were pretty much flat, but we're below zero. We're dropping below zero based on volume, another negative sign. The PMO, after getting to a pretty high reading, is now turning over negative. That was preceded by a decline with price and volume. The PMO Steady, even though we ticked up a little bit, we continue to fall overall with the PMOs that are rising. The buy signals are trailing off. The percent of PMOs that are above zero is declining, but it's still extreme positive. The Elder Impulse System for the S&P remains at negative. The Parabolic SAR, we have the dots on top, that is negative as well. The Slope Oscillator is beginning to decline after we saw this negative divergence. We were going higher based on price. This was making a lower high and now we're starting to roll over a bit. The MACD, pretty much the same thing, a negative divergence and starting to go lower. So when we look at all of our oscillators, the short term with the slope and TSI, they are now down. The intermediate term oscillators are also turning down, seeing a little bit of weakness in the tricks and a bit of rolling over with the KST. The BPI, still not falling as much as you might think it would. We are declining after giving an extreme positive reading, but we're still above this 70 level. The NYSE bullish percent index did turn down, but it's still above the 50 level. This is another thing that we've been watching. This tries to measure the smart money. Where we've been seeing a decline with the chicken money flow, we're continuing to show even more negativity. The chicken oscillator is also turning back down and is below zero, that's negative. The money flow is dropping below 50, that's negative. Ultimate oscillator was flat, but is still below 50, also negative. The vortex is down below the one line, that's the line between positive and negative, we're seeing the green line coming down and the red line coming up and they might cross very soon. The RSI, we're seeing a real decline with the 14 period but still above 50. We're dropping below 50 with the RSI 9 period after we had seen this negative divergence. The 20 period simple moving average of the open high low close, we closed right at the lower end of this mini rainbow. Is that going to provide some kind of support or are we going to continue to fall and see this rainbow start to roll over? On balance volume did decline, but is still above the moving average. We're seeing a drop off in the 200 day simple moving average study as well as the 50 period moving average study. The Pring bottom fissure though still continues to generate a buy signal. Now it's starting to roll over just a bit. If we see a lack of follow through to the upside, we might end up losing this over the next few trading days. Our Fibonacci and line studies, here's the trend study where we're going from the October 2022 low to the March 2023 low and then shooting that trend line off. Then I drew another trend line going from the March 2023 low to the May 2023 low. We've already broken below this other trend line. Now we're wondering if we continue to fall, will we find some support at around the 4450 area? Our 50 day cycle, we hit that new cycle. We've been going down ever since. Is that gonna continue on? Our different charts, looking more negative with the hike in Ashy looking negative with the Keggy, still looking positive with the Ranko, and showing some more negativity with the three line break. Our different indexes, the equal weight and the S&P are performing about the same, they're both declining. The ratio is not really moving all that much. We saw this big spike up when the big stocks were leading. Now that we're coming back down on the positive side, that means more stocks are participating, but the fact that this is coming down is also negative in and of itself. Taking a look at Dow theory, where we dropped with the Dow, we were pretty much flat with the transports. We're seeing some more weakness with utilities and that might give some support to the S&P. The transports to S&P 500 ratio, it did tick up and we're going up overall. That could be a positive thing in the background. Looking at the Dow to transports ratio, way over on the right hand side, when this is going down, that means transports are outperforming. 
Looking at the discretionary and staples equal weight study, where we decline with discretionary, we ticked down just slightly with the staples. Overall, the ratio did decline, but we still continue to see discretionary outperforming staples. The Dow is still holding up above this previous pivot level right now, and it's hanging in there, and it wasn't down all that much. The Elder Impulse system, though, for the Dow has switched to negative. The NASDAQ, this is the area that we're really keying in on. We're between this upper pivot point and this S1 level. We did have support hold that I'll show you in just a moment. Are we going to fall down to this S1 level, or are we going to be able to turn and go back above the pivot point? This is the 61.8% retracement level. We came really close to that, and that so far has acted as support. Are we going to bounce up off of this or end up falling through? Now, one thing to keep in mind, I draw these Fibonacci lines myself, so some of these numbers may be a little bit different, and I have to eyeball this, so sometimes, rather than a computer just figuring out where to put these lines, I have to kind of look and see for myself. The cumulative new highs, new lows for the NASDAQ are turning up just a little bit, but continue to fall overall. We're dropping below zero with the new highs minus the new lows. The NASDAQ 100 is still above the August 2022 high. Will this provide support? We almost came down to that level and bounced up off of that. The Qs, though, have remained at negative. Longer term, with the PPO study, we saw this negative divergence. We're also declining with the PPO. So the momentum and trend for the NASDAQ 100 is now switching to down. The bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100 is dropped below the 70 level. That's an official overbought signal. As we keep falling, that will be more and more negative. The small caps still are above this pivot level, working off of a recent golden cross. But for the Elder Impulse system, we've now switched to negative. The Russell, after coming up to this resistance level and then giving it back, did see a decline on Thursday. We're falling with the RSI, but we're still above 50. The MACD is starting to roll over negative. The ratio between small caps and the S&P is showing that the small caps are outperforming slightly right now, but longer term, they continue to underperform. When we look at small cap growth versus small cap value, we ticked up a little bit. We've been chopping more or less sideways, but we are still in an overall uptrend. The mid caps holding up above this pivot level for the time being, but the elder impulse system was also turned to negative for the mid caps. Mid cap growth versus value it ticked up just slightly. We have been seeing some recent weakness, but we still continue to see growth outperforming value for the mid caps. The FANG index coming down to the 50 period moving average. Then after going back and setting a new all time high and falling below the previous high, we saw a little bit of improvement here, but we'll have to see. Can we get back up to the previous high and then break through this? Or are we going to continue to fall after hitting this resistance level? Keeping an eye on the banks, where we're above the 200-day moving average with the bank ETF, we're seeing a golden cross now with the financial sector. That could be more positive. When we look at the financials and compare it to the S&P, they are showing some improvement, but continue to be in a downtrend overall. The regional banking ETF compared to the financial sector is showing some improvement, but also in a longer term downtrend. Looking at bonds, we saw a real spike up in the 10 year yield, which means that the 10 year price fell. We're starting to see a death cross based on price. We're declining with the MACD. We're also declining with the RSI. Also, this has been a concern that we've been watching every day. In an environment where folks are more confident about interest rates, we would see this ratio going down. It is continuing to go up. But when we look at the S&P and compare it with three to seven year bond ETFs, we did see a decline, but we're still above the 20 period moving average. As long as we stay up in this area, the market is suggesting that we will see a soft landing. We're still starting to climb with the three month yield going back well above where we were at back in 2007. Our long term charts still looking positive with the special K. We're starting to drop below the extreme positive readings with the 150 and 200 day moving averages. We're still a little bit below this resistance level for the weekly chart of the S&P. Are we going to come back up and camp on this or are we going to continue to fall down below it? Seeing kind of that same thing with the NASDAQ 100, where it's more or less right on the line. But this is more negative. When we look at the NASDAQ 100 to Dow ratio, we're at a very high level and starting to come down. Other times that this ratio was really high, that was really negative for the market. This is the dot-com bust. It took us 20 years to get back. This is right before we saw the decline from 2021 going into 2022. 
An update of our possible positive scenarios. Not really seeing much of an improvement with the Qs to S&P, discretionary to S&P, or large cap growth to large cap value. Our growth to value ratio is still showing some weakness with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps. The S&P to utilities ratio, it is still going up. That could give some support. When we look at the broad range of the highs minus the lows and take a five period moving average, we're still above zero even though we are declining. The 50 period exponential moving average of the new highs minus the new lows ticking down just a little bit, but we're still above zero. Our indicator, which is the black line, continues to decline. It's dropping below the moving average, which is pulling the red line down just slightly. This is still positive. The 10 day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows were still extreme. And even with the declines that we've been seeing, we're still in this area. If we see follow through weakness and this really starting to drop as these 10 days come closer and closer to recent prices, we'll have to see if this indicator is still looking as positive as it is right now. The growth to value ratio for the S&P did turn up a little bit. We've been going more or less down in the shorter term, but we still continue to be in a longer term uptrend. The Staples S&P 500 ratio did spike up a little bit, but continues to decline overall. This should be giving some support to the S&P. So our outlook for Friday, we had a lot of influential earnings report that have been released and that the market has been digesting. This was Apple and Amazon. They reported after Thursday. We had Qualcomm after Wednesday. We still have Merck yet to report. There's no scheduled Fed speeches for the month of August. But in the short term, we're negative. We're turning more negative in the intermediate term. We're still wondering, is this going to last? Is this just due to seasonality? But the market continues to be at a tipping point. Technically, it is negative right now. But until we break through those support levels, we could still bounce higher and show a recovery from this. If we break those support levels, then things are going to turn even more negative. The economic reports coming out, the big one is the employment situation report. Keeping an eye on the geopolitical events, right now it's inflation and interest rates and what's this report going to say? Here's the updated economic calendar for the week. Looking at the Stock Traders Almanac statistics for August 4th, we are neutral to positive across the board, a little bit above, a little bit below 50%. Also wondering, is this seasonality on the NASDAQ going to continue or are we getting close to being done with that? We will be on the fourth trading day of the month. This is when the jobs report comes out. We tend to see more weakness now that we're in the early part of August. When we go back to 1950 and pre-election years, the S&P's up and down 50% of the time. So what about our scenarios? Going more with the downside for right now, but please be warned in the short term, we're becoming oversold. We're turning more negative in the intermediate term. We're wondering how long is this gonna last? Are we still at a tipping point because of the support below current prices? We can't really go with the up scenario for right now because we are shifting more negative. We're definitely not going with the sideways trend right now because our ADX is still at a very high reading, even though it's dropping below the moving average and the green line is declining and in danger of crossing over the red line. The warning signs, are we still seeing a convergence of these shorter term bearish signals? Yes, we did see those, especially on Wednesday, a little bit on Thursday. Longer term trend signals may be signaling a top. We're starting to drop below those levels with the S&P and the NASDAQ. Will that hold up or are we going to continue to fall? Seasonally and historically, we continue to be in a weak time. The S&P oscillators are negative. We're also keeping an eye on the negative NASDAQ 100 oscillator. The VIX is showing that there's still not a lot of fear and it's starting to go back up even though it ticked down a bit in Thursday's session. The cumulative new highs, new lows for the NASDAQ continue to show weakness. The three month yield is above where we were at back in 2007 and continuing to go up. The S&P 500 growth is weakening, but it's still in a longer term uptrend. The weekly pivot that acted as resistance last week, we came up to that level. We've been falling back ever since. The parabolic SAR is negative and I rely on that pretty heavily. Earnings season, positive or negative, depending on your company. The positive signs, we still have the seasonality and setups that remain further in the background. The daily special K chart for right now is still positive where the weekly chart is negative. Our longer term equity put call ratio continues to be positive. We're still above that downtrend channel upper line. We're still in a risk on posture even though we're seeing that coming down a bit in the ratio. 
Lower price levels so far are providing support. Are they going to continue to hold? The S&P is outperforming utilities. The NASDAQ and NASDAQ 100, they did break above overhead resistance, but we're still having a hard time getting above the daily pivot point resistance. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio is declining. The Russell and the small cap index, as well as the mid caps, have generated recent golden crosses. Small and mid cap growth continues to be positive. The Pring bottom fissure has generated a buy signal, and the financial sector is now generating a golden cross. So what about our conclusion? Overall, the S&P, it's turning negative. There's a lot of folks out there that preach this, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. While this is a dip right now, if we get a lot of people doing that all at the same time, that could continue to give some support to the market. In the short term, we're negative, but we are oversold. We're turning more negative in the intermediate term. We're still above the 200-day simple moving average in the long term, so that continues to be positive. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. Have a really good day, and I will talk to you in the next video.